Hello there, and welcome to Lucas Film Reviews, and tonight we show the first we'll be looking at is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This film is the latest in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it is about Wanda, who got, who got the Scarlet Witch powers in the TV show WandaVision, which is really good, apart from the finale, which feels a little too MCU-ish. But that's not what the point is. Oh, well, Warden Division's a great show, but let's go back to so much Doctor Strange. She's trying to get a new character called America Chavez to, to, to let her get to her kid, which she created in Warden Division. And Ben is coming back to trying to stop her because if she does, she's using something called the Dark Hold, and that could destroy the universe in a way. So they must stop her, and we go through multiverses. This film is directed by Sam Raimi, who has directed such films as the Evil Dead trilogy, the Tony Maguire Spider Man trilogy and um, Drag Me to Hell and Darkman and he brings a signature style to the MCU. The main cast including Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth, Os Elizabeth Olsen, Benedict Wong and newcomer Ochi Gomez, and if I pronounce your name wrong, my apologies, all putting some great performances. For a 12A movie, this film is very, very gory because it feels more like a Sam Raimi movie than a Marvel movie so it brings a lot of this horror slash gore elements to it. And while it, is a, while it is an enjoyable film, it feels like a bit of a mess in terms of, uh, in terms of the script. And also, for a film called Multiverse of Madness, we don't really explore a lot of universes. For the most of the film, we're in kind of two, dubbing the main one and another one, which has some cameos, which I'm not going to mention for spoilers reasons. However, there will be a spoiler point later on the um, episode, if whatever I have you. But, um, for a film called Multiverse of Madness, there's not a lot of madness in terms of universes. Look, I'm not looking for like a million cameos, but show us some more of the weirder side of universes. One of my things I love and hate about this film is the use of Professor X. Listen, I love Patrick Sears Professor X, that's why I love that part. But I feel like including him really downgraded his death in Logan, which was a very powerful moment. Isn't a spoiler, he's in the trailers. Also, this film is quite mad at some points, including a zombie Doctor Strange, which was with like little demons going, nah, I'm gonna get you, nah, nah, nah. And it feels like a horror movie at some point, and also the Danny Elfman score is beautifully great. This next point is a spoiler, so this is your official spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. <laughs> spoiler warning, whatever. So skip past this part if you don't want to spoil it, so here's the time code to skip to the next review. I love the fact that we saw John Kagowski as Mr. Fantastic, as Reed Richards, but he's only in it for like a second and then he gets ripped to spaghetti, basically. Overall, Multiverse Magic is a great movie, go see it. Next up is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. On to another, well, it's another multiverse movie, and it's about Evelyn, played by Michelle Yeoh, if I got that name wrong, I apologise, who is just trying to do her taxes and then must become a hero and stop a multiversal threat. This film is bizarre. There are so many, we see a variety of universes from one where they all have sausage fingers to one where some of them are rocks. This film is very funny. I laughed out loud a lot at the film and also it's very emotional at some points. Like the film somehow got me sad over a raccoon who used somebody's hair to cook like in Ratatouille. All of the performances are great and they really do sell how utterly bizarre all the universes are. And also the fight scenes which are all which are done mainly by Quan Hai Quan Yu Quan. If I got your name wrong, I apologise, who is great as the fight. He does great fighting in the film because he's trained in it from the looks of it. I don't know. Yes, he probably is. I don't want to say any more just in case I spoil the film, but overall this is a great fantastic movie and it's one of the best of the year. Next up is Firestar. This is the latest Stephen King adaptation and it's about a girl called Charlie who has the ability to use fire as a power and she's running from the government as she finds it hard to control her powers. This film is dull. The chemistry between the daughter and dad played by Zac Efron is fine. Like it's not great. She, the main girl Charlie doesn't have much of a character outside of her powers. Zac Efron puts in a really boring performance, like he knows this film is bad so he doesn't give a crap about the film. And the climax is very unsatisfying. Overall, this is a very bad movie, they really should have put the fire out on it before they released it. Next up is The Lost City. This film is about Lorette Sage, a writer played by Sandra Bullock, 
who is kidnapped by Daniel Radcliffe's character, who plays who is an evil millionaire, and who is trying to find a lost city, and she makes he makes her try and find it, and his, her cover model, played by Shannon Taylor, is trying to rescue her, and they tr and they try and find the lost city, and they end up trying to find the lost city together, which is yeah, it's a very entertaining film. There were lots of funny moments and surprising gore at one point. The chemistry between Sandra Bullock and um, Shannon Tame's characters is fine and they're nice romance together. And Daniel Radcliffe is hilarious as the villain, who's very over the top. This film has very much romance in the stone vibes, which I really like. Overall, it's a very fun film. I think all the family will enjoy it. I saw it by myself because I have no so I don't don't movie for people. I just see it by myself. Don't know why I'm mentioning that. Anyway, on to the next film, our oh, final film, The Northman. The Northman is directed by Robert Eggers, who directed movies such as The Vic, which with two V's for some reason, whatever, and The Lighthouse. This is about a Viking prince who sees his dad, carried by Ethan Hawke, killed in front of him, and he runs away and comes back years later as an adult, now played by Alexander Skarsgård, to try and get back his kingdom. This film is brutal in terms of violence, gore, and the whole cast, including Alexander Skarsgård, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Willem Dafoe, and um, Nicole Kidman, put in some really, really good performances in this movie. This film is a bit weird at some point, at some point I was wondering what the hell I was watching, but that's just one or two scenes. Like, as much as this film is great, it does feel like it drags in the middle a bit, but that's just only a small issue in the grand scheme of things. Overall, this is an amazing film you should see, and that's it from Lucas Film Reviews from May. See you all next time.